everyone. This is Samantha from The Dancing Soap Dish. I have another Christmas soap tutorial for you. We're doing Christmas mosaic soap bars today. Here they are laid out in all their glory. They, uh, they truly are beautiful. And I'm going to show you today how you can make them. It is deceptively simple actually. They look really complicated but it's actually a, a very simple process. Uh, but they're quite impressive. So it's basically just a round soap bar. These colored here, this is clear melt and pour soap base that's been tinted green and red. Uh, I've got a, um, a special mold that makes mosaic shapes. Very simple. I've just used the triangles, the circles and the squares for this project. And um, also this circular mold here for the bases. If you're looking for information on where you can buy supplies as well as all the quantities and measurements, you can find it on the Dancing Soap Dish. I've got a, uh, a written tutorial on the website with also some links to where you can um, buy equipment and such. Please like and subscribe if you want to see more soap tutorials and more Christmas tutorials. Uh, if there's something you particularly want to see, drop us a comment. We're going to get started. Let's go. So I'm going to place my mold just on a tray with a piece of um, grease proof baking paper on it because there will be some spillage. So I've worked out that to fill this whole mold takes 120 grams. There's six sections and each section holds about 20 grams of liquid soap base. So 120 grams for those of you who use Imperial is just over 4.2 ounce. Uh, I'm only going to need to fill half of it today. I just want triangles, circles and squares which are conveniently located right next to each other. So I'm actually just going to fill half the mold. So I only need 60 grams. Uh, which is just over 2.1 ounce. Uh, I'm also going to use my handy little pouring jug here. Um, you can pour left, you can pour right. This is normally used by baristas with espresso machines uh, and it's just super handy when you're trying to um, heat and pour small amounts of soap. So it's a 75 mil uh, jug there, which is um, about two and a half ounce. So here's my clear soap base. I've melted it, I've tinted it green. I haven't bothered to scent it. I don't think that's necessary because there's gonna be plenty of fragrance uh, in the rest of the soap bar. And now I'm just going to pour um, it into just these three sections here, the triangles, the circles, and the squares. I'm gonna work fast because it's starting to set. And because this is such a shallow mold, as soon as it sort of, it hits the mold, it does start to set quite quickly. So you really have to move fast. I'm just gonna move it around quite freely. Make sure that every section gets plenty. You'd be like, oh, you haven't filled it all the way up, but what I can do is I'll get a scraper and you'll be amazed at how that spreads it out amongst the rest of the mold. I can also use it to scoop up bits that go off the side uh, and fill them up. I don't think it really matters in this case if some of them are missed because um, you know, if I'm missing a, a triangle or two or whatever, it's really not the end of the world. I'll still have plenty others to work with. So that's setting now. I'm going to stop playing with that because it's just going to become a big gooey mess. That's perfectly sufficient um, for the mosaic tiles that I want to make. And uh, I will let that harden. Won't take very long at all. I'll give it a good uh, half an hour and then I'll be able to pop all that out and pour the red. So I'm back. I said that I was um, gonna leave these for about half an hour, but I ran out of time and it's actually the next day. 
uh, but obviously set hard and ready to pop out now. Um, it's pretty easy. I'm just going to peel it off the paper there. All you need to do is turn the mold over, give it a good flex, and little mosaic tiles just pop out. Little mosaic tiles made from soap. So here are all my tiles turned out. It's a bit of a jumbled mess, but that's okay. You can just pull out the bits of rubbish and the tiles that aren't fully formed. Don't need that one there. But there's still plenty of um, perfectly formed tiles here. Got round ones, triangle ones, and square ones. Some of them do have a little bit of soap fray attached to them, especially the, um, the round ones have a little bit of a, a frayed edge here. You can clean those up with a pair of scissors or just peel them off with your fingernail. Uh, I normally do that at the stage where I s actually start to use them because I won't use all these, so there's no point cutting all the fray off all of them. That's just a waste of time. I'll just cut it off as I go and, and clean them up. No worries there. So here I've put down a fresh piece of greaseproof paper and I've cleaned up the mold and put it down on top, ready to pour the red. So here's my red, ready to go. What I didn't do last time was use my alcohol, which I should have, um, to just help it spread across the mold. You can pour from one hand and spray with the other hand. And like I did last time, I'm going to use a scraper just to spread it to the edges of the mold. Pop those bubbles there. Pull any here. There we go. If it's resisting going into some of the little cavities, then the alcohol can certainly help with that. Give me a bit of a poke. There we go. Okay, so it's starting to set now, getting a little bit jelly like. I'll stop there so it doesn't turn to goo. There you go. See, that went much better than the green one did because I remember to use my alcohol. Very important there. Okay, I will leave this one to set for at least half an hour. I'll try and get back after half an hour this time and um, show you what it looks like to pop them out and then we can continue. What I'm also going to do is I'm going to fill the four cavities of this round mold. These are gonna be the bases for my um, mosaic soaps. I've chosen round, but you could use square or rectangular, whatever you, you want to do. Um, I'm going to put in um, 70 grams or about two and a half ounce into each uh, cavity, and yeah, then I will build the mosaic on top of that. So, as you can see here, I've got my white melt and pour soap base all cut into cubes. I've added an extra cube for wastage. Uh, so there's 280 grams here, about 10 ounce. And now I'm gonna pour my malt. So here's my soap, all melted. I've scented it um, with wild orange and Douglas fir essential oil. That's a really nice Christmassy fragrance that I like, but you can just use your favorite Christmas fragrance. Just giving it a good stir. Make sure all that scent is mixed in nicely. I'm going to put my mold 
on a set of scales, kitchen scales, because I want to have even um, weight bars. So exactly 70 grams is what I'm going for. I have got that extra cube for wastage that I put in. So if I do go over a little bit, I don't have to panic that one of my other bars is going to be short. And there will also be a little bit that will be stuck to the, the jug and stuck to the stick. So I've just teared my mold, my scales and I'm filling my mold quite slowly to make sure I don't go over my 70 grams or two and a half ounce. Beautiful. I'm tearing my scales again to pour the next one. Now I'm going to spray them with alcohol to get rid of these bubbles. Beautiful. And I'll leave that like that. So these are going to be the base for my mosaic designs. I haven't filled the soap all the way to the top of the cavity, so I have got some room to work there. And um, what I need to do is wait for this to set, and also I'm waiting for my mosaic soap tiles to set. And then once it's all ready to go, I can start designing. I'll be back. So here we are half an hour later. As you can see, it's set hard enough. So I will turn these out too. Only having to wait half an hour means that you can do both colors um, on the same day. Which is good. With the green, I waited till the next day, but that was just because I ran out of time, not wasn't deliberate. Um, so I'm just gonna start breaking them up by bending the mold. So there we go, beautiful red mosaic tiles made from melt and pour soap that I'm going to use to make some beautiful mosaic Christmas soap designs. So we're back. Here are the four round soap bars that we poured. They are nice and firm now. Here are all the soap tiles that we made. I've um, popped them out and sorted them by shape. And now we are ready to start making our mosaic designs. So I've got a pair of scissors on hand here because uh, some of the soap tiles just need their edges trimmed. And I've got a breadboard and a sharp knife if I want to cut any of my tiles into a different shape. So I'm going to get started. I'm going to have the good side, well the side that was facing down inside the mosaic mold, face up. Okay, so you, the side that we're looking at now is going to be the top of your soap, so make sure that you use the nicest part of your soap tiles facing upwards. Thank mm -hmm. you. camera to um, position them properly and put some borders around them 
and then I'll come back and show you how to do the well soap grout basically <laughs> okay see you soon so I have returned I have completed all my mosaic designs. I've tidied them up. I've made them perfectly straight as I want them. I've put a border around these two. I said I was gonna do a border. I haven't done a border around these two because these are actually um, quite large designs and I found with a border, the whole thing just looked very busy and it sort of took away from the design. So I have a border around my holly and my present, but I also have an ornament and a Christmas tree up here. Um, I've ready i'm ready to start grouting them for lack of a better word i'm just going to grout them with soap obviously and i'm going to grout them by pouring a small amount of soap onto the top so that it surrounds all the tiles and cements them in uh, this is work that needs to be done very carefully and very slowly uh, i'm going to use some tools to help me I'm keeping a bamboo skewer really close at hand. Uh, if I find that some of my tiles start to move, I can quickly sort of push them back into place before the soap sets. Uh, I'm also using my espresso cup again. Uh, love these, you can pour from the left, you can pour from the right. And um, I'm gonna actually sit this in a double boiler as well to make sure I keep my soap warm. It might take me a while to do this. I can't have my soap seizing up on me and setting. I can't keep going back to the microwave and, and reheating it. I run the risk of burning it because it's such a tiny amount. Uh, so this little cup here is really invaluable. Uh, as I mentioned before, I do have a double boiler off to the side that I can just put my cup in to, uh, to make sure that that soap stays nice and hot and therefore nice and fluid because I'm definitely going to need that. Alcohol, absolutely necessary. Isopropyl alcohol. Uh, this will help the, uh, the layer of soap that I'm going to pour next stick to the existing layer, but also you'll be able to see it's necessary to make sure that the soap spreads between all these little gaps here. Um, really hard to do it without the alcohol um, whereas when you spray the alcohol and break the surface tension, you'll find that it um, flows into those gaps quite readily and that's exactly what we want. Okay, I'm ready to get started. I'm going to measure out 50 grams of white melt and pour soap base. 50 grams is probably a little bit more than we need, but I'm just going to make sure I have plenty that I don't run out. I've actually got myself just a little two ounce paper cup here just to pour the excess into when I finish and that means I can um, pop that soap out of this cup at some stage and reuse it. So, so nothing's going to go to waste. I'd rather be prepared than running out and being very sorry for myself. Uh, so let's get started. Okay, here I have my soap. Just taking it off the double boiler. Um, I've melted 50 grams. I've scented it with the same scent that I used uh, for the white soap base here, which is a combination of wild orange and Douglas fir essential oils. And now with the soap in one hand and my isopropyl alcohol in the other hand, I'm going to very carefully start pouring a layer around the soap. Ideally not touching the soap, though I'm not doing very good at that. I want it to fill around the edges as well. got a cotton bud dipped in alcohol here that I can use to clean up some of these sections that have a bit of white on them. There we go. That 
it's looking lovely. What I really should be doing is spraying this with alcohol, spraying this soap with alcohol before I start as well. So. I spray it the more it fills up around Get the soap around the edges make sure it's getting into all those spaces especially around here Beautiful. That's working quite well. I just want a little bit. And the section here. There we go. You can see the benefit of um, this pouring cup that I'm using with the, um, the really accurate spout. Here we go, that's looking lovely too. I'm gonna pop my soap back on the double boiler just to warm back up again. It's starting to set a little bit and I don't like that. These two without the borders should be a little bit easier. Hopefully I can do them a little bit faster as well, which will certainly help. I don't have to avoid the border, I can just pour quite simply all the way around. I'm going to give that a really good spray and watch it move in between all the gaps, which it has. Just going to rub off this little block there, that's looking really great. Do the same for this one. Pour all the way around. Give it a spray to help it move into the middle sections. because it's got plenty of alcohol sitting on the surface of the tiles. If I do happen to drip some on them, I can just wipe them off with this cotton bud I've got here that's been dipped in alcohol as well. So you don't have to worry about being super accurate. These things can be tricky, but as long as you've got the tools to, um, to clean them up, then it's not an issue. And there you go. My tiles have been grouted. Last but not least, I'm just going to very carefully check if there's some spots that need a little bit more. I think this one could definitely do with a bit more. Cement that in there. Last but not least, I'm going to pour this leftover soap that I've got into this cup. And I can keep that for another day.
So there you have them, my Christmas mosaic soap bars. I'm gonna let them set oh, at least 48 hours, preferably longer. I really don't want to risk um, any of them, any of the layers coming apart when I demold them. So I want them to be good and solid and set. But I will return in a few days and demold them for you and show you the finished product. See you then. Hello again. It's been three days since I made these beautiful Christmas mosaic melt and pour soap bars. It's time to take them out of the mold. As you can see, they've set solid. I gave them three days to harden because I really, really wanted to make sure that they were nice and solid. Uh, I don't want any of my layers coming apart when I take them out of the mold. They smell amazing, wild orange and Douglas fir essential oils. Uh, and I'm really excited to take them out and show you how they finally look. So quite easy, just flex the silicon mold around each bar from all different angles and as you'll see the silicon mold is pulling away from the edge of the bars. I'll stick my thumb in there and give that a good stretch too. Then I'm just going to push from the bottom up and pop that out. There's my beautiful ornament. My Christmas tree. Christmas gift. And holly. Aren't they beautiful? These will make a truly lovely Christmas gift for a friend or a loved one. Um, like I said, they smell amazing. Um, they're just plain white on the back, but on the front is a beautiful mosaic pattern. You'll actually be um, amazed how long that pattern will stay on the soap um, as you start to use the soap. Uh, the edges wash away first, but the center normally stays um, right till the very end. So um, you'll always see a little bit of the pattern, uh, hopefully, you know, three quarters of the way through the bar, which is, which is really nice, really lovely. I hope you enjoyed. The tutorial for these soap bars. Uh, all the information including quantities and where you can buy equipment and stuff is available uh, in a written tutorial on the Dancing Soap Dish website. Uh, there'll also be a little bit of information in the video description. Uh, I wish everybody a Merry Christmas and I really encourage you to have a go at these beautiful soaps yourself. I think they'll really impress your friends and family. Mm -hmm.